All right, all right. You know what time it is. Neil Ratner, rock back here with a story. So this past week, musician, singer, songwriter, and a founding member of the Allman Brothers Band, Dickie Betts, celebrated his 79th birthday. So today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about Dickie Betts and the Allman Brothers that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. So Dickie grew up in Florida, where he listened to mostly bluegrass and country music. And his first instrument was the ukulele, followed by the mandolin and banjo, before eventually he settled on the guitar. And at around 16 years old, Dickie got into Chuck Berry and B.B. King. And he, as he delved deeper into what became his guitar heroes, Betts discovered some of their guitar heroes like Django Reinhardt and Blind Lemon Jefferson, and he incorporated bits of everyone into what would become Betts' signature style of playing. Now, Dickie was greatly influenced by a Western swing guitar player he knew named Dave Lyle. Lyle and Betts often jammed together, creating the twin guitar harmonies, which Betts would later incorporate into what became the Allman Brothers' signature sound. Betts and bass player Barry Oakley first started to play together in 1967 in a band called Second Coming. And the two eventually joined Dwayne Allman in 1969 as founding members of the Allman Brothers Band. Now, the Allman Brothers Band, as we all know, is very much of a brotherhood, living together, spending countless hours rehearsing. And in 1970, check it out, they performed over 300 dates on the road, traveling first in a Ford Econoline van and later a Winnebago, which they nicknamed the Windbag. <laughs> now, in March of 1971, <clears throat> the Allman Brothers recorded the famous live album, Live at Fillmore East, regarded as one of the best live albums ever. And just seven months later, Dwayne Norman died in a motorcycle accident. Now, Betts became the band's sole guitarist and also took on a greater singing and leadership role. Now check it out over the course of one night's traveling. Dickie practiced slide guitar intensively in order to cover the majority of Dwayne's leads. Amazing, right? The Allman Brothers Band, though, continued on, as we know, and they added uh, keyboardist Chuck Laval. Then tragedy struck again uh, about a year later when Barry Oakley died after crashing his motorcycle just three blocks from where Dwayne was killed. Lamar Williams was brought in as the bassist to replace Barry in order to finish the album they were working on. Uh, but it was the addition of Laval in particular which changed the band's sound and direction, which became most evident on Betts' song, Jessica. Now, Dickie wrote the song, At the Farm, a 432-acre group hangout in Juliet, Georgia. And according to Betts, I really need to have an image in my head before I can start writing an instrumental, because otherwise, it's too vague. I get an emotion or an idea I want to express, and see what I could come up with. Jessica was an attempt to write a song that could be played with just two fingers in honor of Django Reinhardt, who played with two left fingers due to the severe burns. Now, Betts had crafted the main melody, but became frustrated with its direction until Jessica, Betts's baby daughter, crawled into the room and began bouncing to the music. I started playing along, trying to capture musically the way she looked bouncing around the room, said Betts, who named the song after his little daughter, Jessica. All right. Now, the Allman Brothers album, Brothers and Sisters, which included the song Jessica, <clears throat> represented their commercial peak, has sold over 7 million copies worldwide. Ramblin' Man, written by Betts, also was released as a lead single, became the band's first, and believe it or not, only top 10 single. Betts continued to play with various incarnations of the Almonds until a lawsuit ended it all in 2000. Now, Dickie, of course, was inducted with the band into Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 95, also won a Best Rock Performance Grammy Award with the Almond Brothers for Jessica in 96. And Betts was ranked 58 
on Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Guitars of All Time in 2003 and 61 on the list in 2011. Dickie Vex. All right, that's my story. Hope you enjoyed it. Go listen to some Allman Brothers this weekend. I'll have more stories as the days go on. And as I like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. All right, bye for now.